Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Taco Bites, your daily bite of DJ episode number 162, Quantum Miami, day two. Uh, amazing talks today. Um, some really cool projects uh, coming out and that we're going to share about. Um, number one, let's talk about Giddy and Giddy Wallet. Um, Giddy is building a self custody um, split key um, wallet. Uh, they built it with staking platform. Um, and so there is um, basically what it is is it the, the key is distrib- distributed key um, through your phone, your email, and like text message. Um, and so, and then also one piece on their server. So that way you can, if you lose a piece, piece of your key can get back on and you can then recover, um, everything eventually. Um, and you know, you don't have to deal with your memnonic phrase or JSON, um, or something along those lines, um, that would then, uh, break that down. So really interesting pieces. Um, and and so uh giddy's coming out some with some cool stuff on that what up karmic tom i hope life is good i love seeing my pudgies what is good? Come on up. Uh, let's talk uh, quantum. Uh, I know you're you're out in New York right now, but and I'll be back there on Sunday. Um, if not, um, you know, and then looking at hosting a a, a token event, um, talking Zen with Mexi on the fourth. How are you doing? Bonjour. I'm good. How are you? Yeah, so much has happened since Metaverse Summit. Man, Metaverse Summit was amazing. Um, what have you been up to since? So much stuff into NFTs and work and like French companies have started to understand what it was about with NFTs. Okay. Um, and these days I'm into uh, art I'm into uh, private contracting, like NFTs have really changed my life. And uh, I couldn't travel as much as you do, but you seem to have gathered like some knowledge, I guess. Sometimes. I'm always, I feel like I'm sometimes just behind the bell curve, but, uh, you know, it's... There's there's a lot to a lot to learn out there, you know. So lucky to be in a very fortunate position on the front line. So you would describe yourself as a generalist connector or something like that. Yeah, I you know, um, I would say yeah, biz dev contractor. You know, I'm a consultant. Yeah, I've started that myself. And uh, how has it been going with your um, New York uh, incubator? I think you were in something like that at some point, right? Yeah, so um, that's still building out. Um, And one of the, like, this is a bad thing, but this also goes to showing how to do it maybe differently and do it right. There was another incubator program that started up in New York, Pyrodow. Um, and they sort of got forced out after one year because, uh, the landlord wanted to use the building for something else. Um, and so there's a lot of learning to be done there. Um, and meet it met with, uh, uh, XLM, uh, venture fund today that, uh, really likes the, 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 the ideas of it and, and pushing it forward. Um, and so have another meeting with them tomorrow um that will start more discussions so 
um, sort of talked about some of the impact projects that, you know, where that would be good for that and the start of it. And that was, it was really amazing. Well, that's, uh, yeah, that's, there are some good things in bad things, I guess, but that's cool. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, I, I saw on LinkedIn like a few weeks ago that uh, refi and decide projects were really attractive for uh, venture capitalists these days. Yeah. Um, refi is, refi is coming really uh, come a long way. Um, and, um, you know, decentralized science is, is amazing, you know, and what, it, what the cap what capabilities of it and like the, I guess you could almost say the la not lack of censorship, but not censoring, but true peer review ability. Yeah, and especially uh, since uh, Lancet scandal uh, uh, with um, with what happened with some so called vaccines, but yeah, definitely. Uh, I know a guy. What he does, he's he's in plan gang. What he does is like he does three D modeling of plants in. Costa Rica and other countries. Yeah. And then he make them at NFTs and he puts all the metadata, all the um, all the details of the plant as in the metadata, and then people can share and learn. So it's good for uh, uh, studying nature, but also to to have like some cultural um, impact. Because like the Vanuatu, I don't know if you know Vanuatu. It's a small island. Maybe I've talked to you about. Yes, it. yes, I, I know, I know. Yes, um, it's down there by like Samoa and Tonga. Yeah, so South Pacific. Exactly, and they are basically going into the metaverse since uh, because of uh, climate um, deregulation. Apparently, yeah. that to not lose their culture. They're going to be integrated into a metaverse, and um, okay. and that was cool. And also for um, indigenous um, practices, yeah, uh, encrypting them into blockchain for uh, agriculture or uh, living in uh, harmony with nature. Like there are a lot of cool stuff linking uh, Desai. Uh, with ecology, but also for like uh, I don't know cancer research or like space research. There are a lot of exciting stuff. Yeah, no. Um, even even like with like indigenous cultures, like ownership, land ownership uh, deeds as as <laughs> NFTs. I know that's that's making a big impact as well, which is really cool. Yeah, because they can know like have prove that they been there for such a long time and um, you know the saying like uh, words slide and the uh, writing stay so that's kind of cool yeah um, and what it really allows is for uh, like one of the things that were um, it would be really cool to see you know with um, you know even like indigenous cultures and their languages so their language isn't lost yes that's a big challenge um, actually I, I read the definition of metaverse where there would be like instant translation yep um, and so basically these days like everybody speaks English in web 3 uh, and the thing about instant translation in metaverse, and I know Google is working on such things, but it could be cool that people like don't lose their like uh, language, uh, local language skills, um, because English is cool and fast, of course, for business it's great, but every language has like its specific specific specificities, and uh, and it's important to know where you come from, I guess. 100 I 100 percent agree with you on that yeah no um even well even just identity you know of who you are um you know um it, that all falls under under that piece of 
of not being lost, you know, and, and then ownership as well of, of your information, you know? Yeah, I've got, I've seen some project like this in Australia and especially in New Zealand, because yeah. in, New Ze in New Zealand, like it's a country with the highest rate of su suicide amongst young people, which is tragic. And this was explained by the fact that um, the indig people with indigenous uh, roots, they had lost their, they were in an identity crisis regarding their integration to the Western culture. Um, and yeah, what you're saying about identity is like super important. But uh, yeah, but yeah how, how is Quantum Miami? It's about quantum technology, I guess. No, so Quantum Miami uh, got rebooted. Uh, well, just a name change. So um, it was part of Bitcoin Miami. But what, you know, the idea is that they're moving ahead at quantum speeds, you know, so instead of just w talking on Bitcoin, you know, all of the other tech that's emerging. Um, and so uh, uh, there was talk on, on AI and the, and the pieces within that. Um, and then there was also a lot on um, the ideas within um of building out different things. Uh, one of the things that I did miss today were the pitch events, but um, a lot of DeFi and decentral pro decentralization. Everything was pro decentralization, and then storing as little information as possible um, for the shortest amount of time needed. Um, even within KYC stuff, um, you know, for like on ramping and uh, off ramping solutions, like. Um, the idea behind it, you know, is banks have already, um, and so, uh, it, it brings a really valid point that, um, if you're going to or from a bank and we're talking about trustless, at what point do we stop trusting, you know? Um, and so one of the aspects of that is, you know, possible soul bound that once someone passes one KYC or meet, reads a, read, they get like a, 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 an NFT that just says that doesn't carry any data about the person, but only that, you know, that they've passed KYC. Um, and so uh, that sort of keeps it to to that person so that they don't have to keep doing it over and over again because that onboarding experience for people can be so harsh you know so you'd mean like a, maybe a zk solbon token something like that exactly so one of the companies that i was brought on by um banksa um we were they were talking about you know no one's agreeing on the standards yet of what that looks like and so the the alternative then that that i pitched uh you know is instead of waiting for people to agree on the standard set the standard and follow have just that they think so that way you different platforms but you've already gone through kyc months you don't need to keep going through it if you have this this bound this kyc bound soul token Yeah, it's like like when you enter like a secret lab, uh, you just KYC once with your fingerprints and retina, and then you do whatever you want within the lab. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so that's one of the really cool things. Got you sort of getting to talk about. Um, one of the other pieces too was um, talking about um, both the uh, um, uh, space the correct what term I guess you could say is sharded key phrase. So your mnemonic phrase, you know, saved in separate locations type of thing, like part of it saved on your phone, part of it saved due, tied to your wallet address, you know, your, your, your public key, part of it tied to your email or your cell phone, and then a piece held by uh, the wallet, which then means if you lose any pieces, you can recover and rebuild. 
Um, and not that you're just going to lose out on any, everything and anything. Um, and so got to do a really good talk, uh, with, uh, uh, Giddy. Um, they are not only doing a DeFi platform within their wallet already, you know, cause they're built on Polygon, but it really allows sort of, um, a past ownership, shared ownership, um, that you have ownership of your keys, but it's split in easier ways to onboard people in into Web three. They don't have to go write down a piece on a piece of paper and everything like that. Um, what their key is, they have you know, and have to worry about losing that. You know, they have like their email and something like that set up. Yeah, I've got my seed phrase tattooed on the. Uh my cat so that's okay but uh, no but I, i'm kidding but 100 percent. and i've talked with the digital director of a, a french car maker renault and he was like yeah. oh i'm so, i'm so bad at passwords i'm like it's okay man uh you don't have to use a password manager for it you just write it down on um on a solid piece of paper and then you put it like somewhere safe but um but for UX and UE, like for onboarding people, like that seed phrase needs to issue, um, needs to be addressed. And that's cool that people like are um, fast moving in Miami because um, in France, like it's tough, man. The French, the French president has seen Sorare for soccer, but he doesn't know a lot about NFTs. So, yeah. No, it, it, uh, you know, uh, the m mayor of Miami, you know, yesterday came and talked at day one, gave the opening keynote. Um, he is super bullish on crypto and making Miami a hub um, of it. So um, there's a lot of cool stuff, sort of like it does in Paris. You know, it started off small of officials sort of getting on board with it that then um, started, you know, going to a national presence. And that's sort of the hope here as well. You know, um, local communities getting on board with it and, and then it moving up the ladder. So that's sort of cool. Yeah. And, uh, following what has been happening in the recent events in NFTs, like, uh, with Donald Trump launching his NFTs and Ron DeSantis, like, quite running for president i know it's about politics but like florida has always been crucial for the usa and um and definitely miami is rega is regarded as a as a hub and like i think it it will succeed uh but there is all like political stake in it and so we'll see what happened but uh yeah no it's uh <laughs> politics will pay um pave the way for it uh, you know, they paved the way for it. Um, Brock Pierce gave a really good talk today um, about, you know, decentralized identities. Um, and, you know, the idea that it could, you know, right now we already have basically off chain identities that, you know, where we're valued and rated at, you know, everything from, you know, insurance models to um, credit scores to everything in between that, you know, can be used to harm or, or do good, but we have the opportunity to set it up right so that it is done right rather than waiting for someone to come along and do it with like ill intentions, sort of like how China has it with their social, uh, social scoring almost. Yeah. Because, um, when you talk about social scoring, a lot of people are for it. But to be honest, do you want a world where your civil liberties are like in the Western model, like in the United States of America? Or would you like civil liberties like in China, where you basically have a camera inside your house, you know? And, and people often praise the Chinese model, which I think it's kind of different to what we used to. But for civil liberties, let's face it, all people won't like something based on the on the basic freedom that you can have in the western world so 
decentralized identities is very uh, important and we need to make sure it goes towards like a good intention and some responsible freedom, let's say. Yeah, no, exactly. And that's sort of what the aim is, is that it will aim towards that um, rather than going down a different type of rabbit hole. Um, and so being able to lay the groundwork for it so that it is set up right, um, you know, because like, you you know, it it could be considered good in the Chinese model. But, you know, a lot of what people see is that it's it leads to almost oppression because, you know, it, you know, if you cross the wrong person or group, you know, your social score can be affected and then your ability to buy certain things can be affected by that. You know, your, your access, you know, and if we talk about blockchain being supposed to be answered, you know, but we're then putting people's identity and, and as a social score, we can then cause undue harm through almost societal censorship. Yeah, definitely. Maybe Lisa and Carl want to jump in. But uh, what's your take on AI recently? Because it... Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. I love people join in. Um, so, yeah. Uh, AI is making leaps and bounds, and people are finally starting to see that it's used for more than whatever they've seen on... Um, you know, a uh, TV show, you know, of uh, the bots planning to take over the world. So it leads for a lot of good innovation, I think. Um, we're able to see the good of it. I don't know. What are your thoughts? My thoughts is that Android and AI are two different things and pop culture has shown like shed the maybe a bad image of AI. Uh but um I've I've witnessed the AI deba debate at the Montreal AI debate uh, on uh, Christmas Eve and they were super insightful about the promises of AI. Um, but also maybe the need for regulation and how to train AI and how to have a dialogue with AI. Uh, but yeah, um, my thoughts are like, it can really create a new model of society and not a new utopia for of sure, of course, but um, it's, a, it's a sense of history. And, um, and so it's, it's just a tool, you know, and it's, and it's all about what we are going to do with the tool. And then the fact that AI can become sentient or maybe they can, we can love AI, it's another topic. Uh, yeah. But definitely the mainstream opinion uh, uh, doesn't have all the keys to understand what this AI leap can, can bring uh, to the table and for greater good, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, I would agree with you on that, you know. Um, I I got to see a pitch deck tonight um, for someone that's bidding, building a, a video game. Um, and, you know, the mock-up art was all AI generated. And he said that he had to learn how to learn new commands, you know, to so better describe what he was trying to envision to get the AI to, to finally, comp, you know, comp, get a small grasp is what he was trying to think of um, in, in, in picture. And it was really amazing to see um, the progression of what AI was doing for him for that. Yeah. Even like in medical field, uh, my younger brother, he's a doctor and he's doing modeling about like rare diseases. And he's telling me all the time. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't, if we don't use AI, uh we cannot achieve like such progress and then you've got like 
this eye coming into play. So I, I tried to, to talk to him about it, but uh, definitely for health, because like health and healthcare is like the most important thing we can have. Um, I'm happy that AI can be used for such things. So, yeah, no, it's it's fun and it's good. Um, I don't know. I'm happy with it. Yeah, the 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 only limit I have would be like people were expecting AI to be perfect self driving cars and things like that, but they don't realize that actually AI is here to save us time like computers did at first and that a fully integrated AI will come like later. But when you look at the, at the CIA um, ventures, they have invested so much money into AI um, startups. So they have understood that AI will be a key component of what will happen. So I'm not pro, pro AI regarding wars, but I'd rather have drones fighting drones rather than people getting killed in uh, in war. You know what I mean? Yes, I agree. Um, the one thing that I, I worry about that is then people remove the cost of human from from the equation. And, you know, one of the things that stop us from doing anything right now is, yeah, we might, you know, from doing any moving against any one one person or, or entity is that um, the cost of human life is quite put into that equation, and that is usually the key factor. Like, yeah, we might need to go in there and do this, this, and this, but because you know human life is on the line, we're not going to do that. So then, the opposite of that is if you remove. Um, the human component from it, the human, the human loss or the loss of human, then, um, human life, um, it might make war more of an appetite that can be, that can be swallowed. So there, there, there would, there, there needs to be a fine line on that. I think. Because I agree. The other side of it too, you know, um, Human humans need to be on the ground for the simple fact that um, once once a position is taken, you know, or overtaken, it needs to be manned and um, as much return to normalcy as possible it needs to be there. Is built, you know, that you know, 20 miles, you know, it's 20 square miles that, you know, one side enters with their AI from one side and another side enters in with their AI from the other side and they just battle it out and the winner is the victor, then that's a whole nother thing. Um, innovation on who can make the best battle bots, so to speak, would happen. But right now, it's all being aimed at assist. How can they assist things? Right. It's like uh, AI helping human like rise uh, to its maybe full potential. So in France, there is, they, they've tried to have a constitutional law about AI with a law of robotics, of Isaac Asimov, saying like you shouldn't kill another human. Um, but yeah, human like uh, like AI. I think AI and human will need to dialogue together because the main, I think, the main risk right now for mankind to be erased is not climate deregulation. It's more uh, if someone took control of all drones on Earth. You know what I mean? And cyber war. So yeah. definitely. So definitely, like the the fact to be able to have like human decision and to factor human decision is super important. I will agree with you. It is. You know the story about Turing, the Mac Turing machine. Yep. What? Uh, which yeah. story are you referring to? 
that he cracked the Nazi code and then uh, they didn't they didn't uh, they didn't tell it uh, for two years to so that the Nazis wouldn't know that the code had been cracked. Oh, okay. Yeah. No. Um, know all of that and um, yeah the the whole Turing story with that um, is one of those amazing things. So then the question is. Will humans then work to crack the code of blockchain um, to to have that access? Yeah, and that the thing with quantum computing and like fifty one percent replay attack, but um, we'll see. We'll see because I the promises of blockchain makes it that I don't see the point of cracking it. You know. Yeah. Even for profit, even for profit, like. Well, it's one of those things where um, codes being cracked require a human intervention piece to always be updating it. One of the things that I see within that field um, is as um, we, we can call them bad actors or opposition as their tech always works to increase to be able to break that um there's always the side of trying to upgrade it so it's um unbreakable at current technology levels um right now with um you know hash power and stuff like that on, on proof of work you know the amount of miners um bring security to the chain um the idea is with proof of stake that it would be too costly um, to be able to try to do something like a 5150 or something along those lines. Um, so it's it can be hard to see a future piece for that, you know? Not saying that that's not something we have to be aware of n uh, in the now, but have it on the radar for the future. Uh, bringing AI into it, AI can either both work to secure it or AI can work to try to break it. Yeah, I'm quite optimistic to be honest because Google is the main investor in Web3 to my knowledge. Yeah. And so they are also like a big investor in quantum computing. So I guess they wouldn't like kill one of their two golden eggs uh, using the other, you know, but uh, but to me, I, I think I think AI can help securing the blockchain for good and um, and we'll see how much energy it costs um, but definitely uh, I see it like as a some as a tool to use it in a positive manner, but we'll see. We'll see. I, in a positive manner, um, and a lot of good can be done. And you know, one of the things about people that are building still, rather than coming out with an MVP and just hoping that they can make a quick dollar, even if you don't see the current value piece to it of why um, something might need to be on chain. Um, just, you know, look, look no further than, um, how, how many people or have to give permission for you to send your own money to someone else via like Zelle. Um, and that can, that can lead with a, a heck ton of examples of what that might look like. Um, but it, 
like you, I I am I am optimistic and I'm bullish on where we're heading with it. We have to we have to be because um the current state of the world is so difficult that we have to be optimistic and to see the light uh, at the end of the tunnel because uh yeah it's but but to me blockchain is a new hope but we'll see we'll see yeah we we will um and that sort of brings uh you know um a good little wrap to that i think you know um uh nfts whether we call them nfts digital assets um you know the distributed ledger technology um introduced uh first in the white paper um, for Bitcoin um, sort of gave a proof of concept uh, and brought fully down almost a mathematical equation that it pays more to be good than to be bad. And so, you know, we hope that those standards stay. Um, and it's not uh, not done else in a, in a, in a bad way. Um, I don't know. That's sort of, that's sort of my thoughts on that. It's kind of philosophical and ethical uh, approach, and yeah, people in France, you know, we have a lot of sociologists, etc. And people be like, "Oh, but Satoshi Nakamoto, like his white paper is like philosophical uh, aspect." Yeah. But uh, I agree with you. So, yeah. Different people see good and bad, but yeah, it definitely pays more to be good. So that, that yeah. that's the way I've been raised. So. But yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. All right. Yeah. No. Um, so tomorrow is day three of, of quantum. So we're gonna finish up and, and try to get some. We have some cool interviews lined up. Uh, we have. We had a great interview with Beefy Finance today, um, talking with one of the you know funding team on that um, and their yield aggregator decks. Um, you know, auto compounding. I love it passive income um but uh no that's sort of that's sort of the wrap-up of the recap of the day uh, you know as we wrap this space up do you have any closing words uh, yeah one taco a week keeps the doctor away <laughs> oh man i love i love those uh those thoughts of keeping the doctor away. All right. What happens if I eat five tacos in one day? Then you've got to do a diet for at least two days. <laughs> okay. No, All but right. take, we'll, care, we'll... Take, take care of yeah. your health. Take care of yourself. That's the most important. But yeah. Thanks for the yeah. recap. I didn't know the word that, that quantum Miami, but thank you very much. Yeah. Super cool to see what what happens abroad and like it goes faster in the U.S. for sure, but that's the way it goes. Uh, sometimes it goes fast. Sometimes it goes really slow. If you look at it uh, from uh, from a federal perspective, there still isn't even any clear regulation out there, let alone any state or government funding to even like projects that work to help disenfranchised voices get into blockchain. You know. One of the things that, you know, France, you know, I, I haven't met another country like France yet where the country invests in its people and their ideas as much as I have. Um, they might not be fully on board with an idea of something, but they're on board with the ideas of their people. How they, how they uh, do that all the time, you know, it... it it's come and go, but it, it does set a good world model. So you have the speed on that. Yeah, it's a good compliment, I think. Yes, it, it was meant as such. <laughs> um, yeah. No, but I, I meant it, it's complementary with the way uh, the USA are acting. So I think Europe and the United States of America and then even other areas a very complementary um, um, positive traits. So uh, I think we can all work together to build like a better world. So 
Yeah, definitely. Um, and we'll do that one block at a time. <laughs> so I, I end every show with, uh, my words of wisdom, um, that, uh, I, you know, can be chewed up and spit out in any way possible. Um, but number one, uh, you cannot feed a closed mouth and a closed mouth cannot be fed. Uh, what that means, you know, is you cannot, uh, no one knows you're looking for opportunity if you don't say it and you can't be ready for opportunity if you're not ready for it. So that's sort of, uh, always be ready and always be pushing, always be building. Um, so as tonight's Taco Bites comes to a close, I want to thank everyone who joined in tonight. Karmic, thank you so much for coming in. You know you are always welcome here. Um, I always enjoy our talks. It's been a minute, um, you know, since we've seen each other IRL. Um, I wish, I don't think I'm going to be able to make uh, Paris Blockchain Week this this year because they they moved it they moved it ahead so far. But going to try to make Metaverse Summit again. Yeah, see you in the summer. No worries. Yeah. So with that, um, because you're the only person on stage, you get to help me with the best joke on the face of the planet. And I do it with love, and I do it every single night. So this isn't new. But I think this is a new time with you as a speaker helping out with this joke. Are you ready? Yeah, do it, because like I don't have one in mind. Okay. Knock, knock. <laughs> Closing. <laughs>